Hi everyone, in this video we'll take a look at how you can use uh, R as a programming language to do natural language processing or NLP. R itself comes with a bunch of libraries for us to do text processing and text analytics. Um, however, when you really want to do things like uh, sentence tokenization, word tokenization, named entity recognition, etc. Uh, at times it's helpful to use other libraries uh, which have already been established in the market or in the open source world. Uh, so one in particular is uh, OpenNLP from Apache. So uh, today's uh, video, I'm going to split it into two parts, part one and part two. Uh, so we'll take a look at how you can combine the strengths of both R and OpenNLP to do natural language processing. And uh, what you're watching right now is part one of the video. So in part one, we'll do a quick overview of uh, OpenNLP itself. Uh, if you haven't come across that before, um, we'll understand how you can set up the environment uh, to use OpenNLP, uh, assuming you already have R running. And then uh, in part one, we'll take a quick uh, couple of uh, demo scenarios. So we'll use OpenNLP to do tokenization, specifically word tokenization, sentence uh, tokenization, and finally also referred to as parts of speech or POS uh, tokenization. And then finally in part two, which will be a, a separate video, we'll take a quick look at uh, another demo, uh, which deals with uh, other interesting areas of uh, doing NLP, which is around uh, doing entity extraction. And uh, finally we'll take a look at how we can visualize that in uh, part 2 of the video. So after you finish watching part 1, uh, do take a look at part 2 of the video. So that's uh, basically the agenda. So uh, in terms of uh, context around uh, the packages that we are going to be using today, um, so we are going to use OpenNLP and as I mentioned earlier on, it's, uh, it's one of the libraries uh, that you can use from within R. Uh, it really is a, a, a good framework built through the uh, you know, Apache uh, Foundation, which um, again, of course, is open source and gives us access to a wealth of capabilities around doing uh, natural language processing. But uh, Open NLP is fairly basic in the sense it's a core NLP package. Uh, so uh, at some point in time, your uh, requirements around doing more sophisticated uh, natural language processing might uh, need other libraries, but uh, for the basics, we are taking a look at doing basic uh, tokenization and even doing named entity recognition or NER as it's referred to. So that's the library we are going to be using. So in terms of uh, the setup and uh, the prerequisites, um, so let me just open our studio here for a second. Yep. So uh, keep in mind that uh, you will need to have our Java installed because OpenNLP is a Java library and uh, our Java gives us um, a, a simpler way, if you will, to access uh, Java libraries from within R. I say simpler, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you've uh, gone through the hoops and hurdles before, but setting up our Java can be a bit of a challenge. Um, again, I'm not covering the setup of our Java in this video, but um, keep in mind that there's a dependency on uh, your, of course, your operating system, which uh, version of uh, the JVM, and uh, whether it's 64 bit or 32 bit, and then finally, if you're using um, R Studio or uh, just R base, you will have to go through different setup processes uh, to enable R Java. Once you have our Java installed, uh, you will then need to install the two packages NLP and uh, OpenNLP. Uh, so once you have all these three installed, um, here's a, a, you know, a quick set of uh, code that you can run through. So again, um, the code that I'm running has, uh, is uh, something that I've uh, pulled out of uh, some of the samples which you get as part of the OpenNLP package. So have a look at uh, the package document itself, so this PDF should give you most of the code that I'm using at least for the first part of the demo. So jumping into the demo itself, um, so again I'm going through this fairly quickly, feel free to pause the video and uh, take a look at it at more leisure or uh, you can go and uh, get the PDF file and uh, pull the code from there. Uh, so here we have some sample text to work uh, again, so here it's um, we're creating a list but then we'll 
turn that into a string uh, in part because uh, open nlp can only work with a string uh, so let's just uh, run that bit and I'll finally take a look at s so nothing surprising so we have just taken this and flattened it out into a list and that becomes a sample data that we can work with and it's uh, quite nice because it's a list because we can quickly type in um, you know things that we want to experiment with so then looking at the code again so here we have a couple of different tokenization uh, tokenizers sorry um, so we have uh, the ability to, uh, to extract sentences and uh, the ability to extract words now at first glance this might seem like a simple task uh, again if you're uh, this is your first step into NLP uh, you might even be wondering why we need all these uh, fancy uh, functions why can't we just do some regular expressions or split based on uh, the uh, you know the full stop the period or uh, periods uh, or something like a space but uh, it tends to get quite uh, uh, complicated really really quick so we are using uh, as part of our open NLP, we have the uh, sentence and word tokenizer, so it basically splits those. Um, so, um, yeah, let me run these. And then finally, uh, what we are doing is uh, taking these uh, um, tokenizers and then finally uh, extracting that, um, or as per open NLP, annotate that to A2 so let's take a look at what A2 looks like so at first glance it might look a bit cryptic but basically what is done is it's uh, taken our input here so it's basically uh, retrieved two sentences here so as you can see it's uh, fairly smart um, it didn't blindly um, you know um, take the full stop of the period uh, symbol here as the starting of the next sentence um, it um, correctly detected uh, two sentences here uh, so this is uh, sentence number one and uh, sentence number two so you can see that we have two sentences here and then finally uh, the number of words here so we can see a list of all the words further to that we we could also um, uh, extract the parts of speech so parts of speech basically gives us uh, things like nouns adjectives uh, pronouns etc so it allows us to extract that parts of speech from it so that we can do further text analysis um, so in in this particular code um, this is a separate line here but uh, keep in mind we could have just added uh, this into uh, the previous list here but um, again for clarity's sake um, you know um, putting it into a different line so here we have the previous object which was just broken down by uh, sentence and word so uh, to that we are um, adding the parts of speech token and let's take a look at uh, the parts of speech so here you can see that uh, it's uh, it's also added the uh, uh, parts of speech to it so of course we can't do parts of speech to a sentence it's on a word by word basis um, then finally we'll what we'll do is uh, for us to work with the data set more easily we'll filter the sentence out and keep just the word and uh, finally we'll extract all those to tags and finally let's take a look at the tags so here you can see these are the various um, parts of speech tags that were extracted so if uh, if you've never come across uh, parts of speech tags before um, quite uh, i mean it can be a little confusing at first but uh, progressively becomes uh, really easy to work with so uh, basically it um, gives you uh, a lookup, if you will, of all the various parts of speech uh, uh, in the language. So here I've got a quick uh, lookup here. So if you want to know this URL, uh, I'll just do a quick Google. Um, easy to find these. Uh, so as an example, NN would imply that it's a noun uh, and it's singular. NNS uh, would imply that it's noun and plural and various others. So. Uh, you have uh, quite a few uh, listed here, but of course uh, the sample data that we had was a, a fairly simple set of uh, uh, you know uh, two sentences. So we don't have the entire list of uh, the parts of speech come up, but here already you can see all the various tags here. And uh, finally, we what we can do is um, you know just to get a sense of um, uh, how many um, different parts of speech uh, tags we have, uh, we can. Uh, use the table function so basically it uh, aggregates it and we can see that 
uh, there's um, a lot of references uh, to NN and NP. So again, if you go back here, uh, NN is a noun, and uh, here it's a proper noun, uh, uh, singular. So again, it, it makes sense because if you look back at uh, the text here, you can see that uh, there's references to individual people, um, and uh, you know, there's uh, it's more noun centric. Uh, so uh, this has a text. Uh, so the other last thing what we will take a look at uh, here is uh, if you can merge that together. So here's the the original sentence here. So that's the sentence here, and uh, against each uh, each word we are displaying um, uh, the actual parts of speech tag. So here you can see that this is uh, again it's NNP, which is proper noun. So it detected names correctly. So uh, here's the name and. Uh, uh, it detects nouns, things like boards, for example, correct? Uh, again, keep in mind that it may not be 100% accurate or 100% uh, exactly what you are expecting, but um, that's based on the underlying train data. So if you change the underlying training data, uh, which uh, I wouldn't call it trivial, but uh, it's uh, something that you can train and, I mean, retrain and uh, to a different uh, corpus of text. So you could um, basically do parts of speech tagging uh, based on a corpus of uh, uh, text that uh, best represents uh, the tagging that you want for your final data set. But as you can see in this uh, simple example without uh, you know, much uh, boilerplate code if you will, um, we could um, do some very simple text uh, analytics. Um, so we have extracted um, uh, sentences uh, from a blob of text, uh, we have extracted words, we have um, uh, retrieve the parts of speech uh, and then finally we are now in a position to do, uh, use that information and do some further analysis with that data. So that's a quick wrap up for part one of this video. Um, do take a look at part two of this video where we will do some further analysis and do some further visualization on to this analyzed data. See you on the next video. Thanks.